Rugby Championship Marvel Stadium in Melbourne. So much for us to look forward to. It is time to now cross to our commentary team, Tony Johnson, Mills Mulioyena and Carl Tanana. New Zealand's grip on the Bledisloe Cup now spans almost two full decades. If the Wallabies want it back, then it has to happen right here, right now, under the big dome at Melbourne's Marvel Stadium. Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai ki te whakataitai nui. It's a huge match, not just the Bledisloe on the line, but a crucial phase in this, the tightest ever battle for the rugby championship. Great to be here for this midweek Bledisloe match, alongside Kao Tenana and Mills Muliaina. Talafalava, no mai haere mai e te whanau. Welcome to Bledisloe 1. Oh, minimal changes, really, for the All Blacks from their last outing. They come in the form of oh, Brodie Retallick, lock at lock, Scott. Barrett, he moves to six. Big moment for Hoskins to Tutu as well. He starts at eight. And consistency in the backs, they remain unchanged. Well, while the All Blacks have made few changes, the Wallabies have had to make plenty. New Zealand coming out here, still looking for back-to-back -back wins this year. They know that a victory here would not only secure the Bledisloe Cup, but take them a long way to winning the championship. Let's go to the sideline now. Carl Tanana. Kia ora, Kia ora, kia tātou, katoa, ngā mihiki a koutou i tēnei pō. Yes, TJ, well, just a tick under 50,000 have bought tickets to pack in here at Marvel Stadium. I tell you what, walking around the city, it feels like a natural test week. There's a lot of chatter about the Wallabies uh, getting dusted, but you know what it's like, Millsy, when a team such as the Wallabies are down to that's when they play their best, but this all-black team will know they will have to be on point tonight. They come out into this magnificent arena. You can see the roof is over. And so conditions will be absolutely perfect for the sort of high-octane rugby that we've come to expect from Bledisloe clashes over the years. Sam Kane, his 18th test as captain, moving up alongside the great BJ Lahore, as the man with the ninth most captaincy appearances under his belt Australia well a whole heap of changes have been made by Dave Rennie as he seeks to find the right mix amidst a run of injuries and wavering form the big news the return of Bernard Foley in the troublesome 10 jersey he'll be the fourth player to wear that jersey this year it'll be his first test match since 2019 and his first match of any sort since May some tension amongst the faces of the Wallaby players. Huge incentive here. Dave Rennie seeking to do something that has eluded his last three predecessors and win the Bledisloe Cup. But if they're going to do it, they have to win here tonight. It's a milestone match for one of the real stars of Wallaby Rugby right now. A 50th for Marika Kuroimbeti. Brody Retallick returns to the All Blacks, the starting 15, after coming off the bench in Hamilton the 63rd time. He will start at lock alongside Sam Whitelock. That equals the achievement of the great South African duo, Bakis Bota and Victor Matfield. There is Marika Kuroimbeti, his 50th test, a remarkable player, 17 tries in test rugby. But this year, he's also pulled off some quite astonishing defensive plays. So the team's lining up. We are on the home of the Wunjiri people of the Kulin Nation, the custodians of the land that this match is being played on. By the Wundjeri elder Uncle Tony Garvey. Wamintika to everyone. Wamintika in the Wurundjeri Wurundjeri language means welcome. So welcome to all Indigenous and non-Indigenous people here today. The Wurundjeri people are also a part of the Kulin Nation. So Kulin means man. In the Kulin Nation, we had the five language groups. It was the Wadarong to the west, the Kurong, who were the Wesley neighbours to the Wadarong, Tanarong to the northeast, Bunarong to the southwest, and the Wurrung of the Wurundjeri territory that we stand on here today. 
The Wurundjeri lies in the cities of Melbourne and extends from the mountains of the Great Dividing Range, south to the Arrow River, west to the Werribee River and east to Mount Borbor. It's a traditional custom of the Australian Aboriginal communities to be asked and to give permission for people to enter their land. And today you have now joined with me to honour the spirits of my ancestors, past, present and merging, who have nurtured this land for over 80,000 years. And we, as the traditional owners of the land, offer you a heartly welcome to the land and hope that together as citizens of this beautiful country, we can build, develop and unite stronger nations for all peoples. I just close off in my Wurrung language, which is Wurmijika, Wandoon, Wurundjeri, Balak, Yemen, Kumibik, which means you are most welcome to the land of the Wurundjeri people. May the best team win. Thank you very much. Little Blacks have played here a couple of times before. And people have come from all over, from New Zealand. Kiwis have come from all parts of Australia to support their team. And this is the moment that many of them have been waiting for. big roar go up from the crowd midway through Kamate as the Australians marched in an arrowhead formation of their own signified they will rise to the challenge here tonight Here's our referee, Mathieu Renal of France, Andrew Bass of Ireland and Pierre Brousset of France are the assistants. Ben Whitehouse of Wales is the TMO. The All Blacks have gone into a huddle. They will kick off. They won the toss. And I think Carl Tanana, the only conditions they're going to have to worry about in the early stages is a bit of smoke around. Yeah, with the roof on, they had the fireworks so on, TJ. So it is hanging around a little bit. I'm sure the All Blacks will use their kicking game at some stage. You saw the unity shown by the Wallabies. A lot of talk about that coming into the week. Now it's time to see if they can front up physically. Back Rob Liotta there. Part of an all-Melbourne-born loose trio in this Australian team. And perhaps a signal that Dave Rennie wants his team to really mix it to take the game to the All Blacks physically. There is Bernard Foley. What a return it is for him. First time in three years that he's been sighted in a Wallaby jersey, and he's had no rugby since May, since the Japan season finished for him. Let the battle for the Bledisloe resume. The ball coming down out of the smoke and missed by the Wallabies, but snapped up in the end while Len Ikital grabbed it. But he was put quickly into touch, and there... A mistake from the Wallabies right from the off mills. Yeah, perfect start for the All Blacks here. Just missing it. Timing was Long right. Pressure, Will Jordan and Sam Kane. Great opportunity first up for the All Blacks. And as Jed Holloway it was. He's had to move into the lock position following the departure of Rory Arnold. Now, Samasoni Taukiaho. Thank you. Having such a breakthrough year, the All Blacks 
look to set it from the first line out of the match taken down by Whitelock and the referee already has the arm out Wallabies came up offside and so New Zealand going to get a chance just to throw the kitchen sink at them here in the early stages little chip kick through for Richie Moonga to get after it's been snaffled at the back by Andrew Kellaway it was Havili who kicked it but they go back to the line out and the penalty oh, already we're seeing some innovation from the All Blacks David Havili stepping up and kicking over while little we chip over the top but interesting to see the Wallabies they try and yeah, contest that line out they really try to you snuff it out they're going yeah, to the yeah, corner of KT yeah interesting straight away Mills the, the yeah, attitude not to take points in previous games against the Argentina yeah, in particular that were guaranteed to take those points now after that start and good one for the All Blacks are going to try and put the nail in here now the two locks standing together and it's white lock again they go to the front Sam Kane driving for the line he stopped just a meter short well, here's a great opportunity early on and another penalty advantage going their way. Satutu picks it up. Whitelock. Lomax over the ball. But he peels away now. They go to the Gruden. The Southlander charges at the line. They hold him up. So it was good defence by Matt Phillip, but another penalty. Oh, they're mounting now, aren't they? Great innovation off that line out. They dummy the drive. Shifted it along. Sam Kane down that blind side. There wasn't much room to move, but he showed plenty of strength. The All Blacks testing them again. White Lock's been used twice now on that full line out. Well, barely three minutes into the test. Another line out close to the line. This time they go to Retallick. More conventional play with Tolki Aho in the boot, and they start to move it forward now. Satutu comes in, the backs come in, they drive towards the line, another advantage, Tolki Aho, he's over, it's a try! What a great start for the men in black. A perfect start, Tony. It was from their own kickoff, they set the toe. Three different line-outs. And variation there, but they were nice and steady. The body height from that drive, exceptional as well. They got a bit of help from the backs as well. Will Jordan, David Harvelli gets in there. Hoskins to 2 2, who came in too. Great start for the All Blacks. Well, I'll tell you what, Tyrell Lomax on this near side of the field, we're not going to see it on this replay. He was the one that's just was able to get that going forward after it stayed initially with the Wallabies with good defense, but the hard work by Tyrell Lomax, outstanding. And just look for the ball to come down. They were very close to the touchline. You can see there the official, he was right there. Samasoni Taukeaho, that's the sixth try of his all black career. And he literally has led the charge this year, Mills. Yeah, certainly has. Accuracy of his line out throw has been pretty good as well. He's nailed. All three so far, but the body height, very impressive, the body height of that drive from the All Black pack. And it's been all the All Blacks in this first just under five minutes. Well, it's a challenging kick first up for Richie Moonga. His 40th test, and he gets good contact on it, drawing it round and over. Well, that's a fine conversion from Richie Moonga, and the All Blacks lead it by 7 to nil after five minutes. Well, New Zealand getting absolutely what they wanted after choosing to kick off. Now, can they do better from the restart? Whitelock goes up secure, and driving away too. Eventually put on the ground... Toreki making the tackle, the hooker now winding up is Retallick. Samu and Slipper making the tackle. Back they go to Moonga and kicks high. Again, the ball coming down from out of the smoke. It's awkward and not taken by Foley. Kane is there. Passes it away to Aaron Smith. 
And there's Satutu to clear it away. Mong, and they look like they're going to move it. Havili puts the kick ahead into space for Clark. It sits up for him. The transfer doesn't quite connect, though, with David Havili. Boy, they were under all sorts there, the Wallabies. They could have been staring down a second try. Oh, and you're seeing the balance, too. I'm just watching this last bit here. The pressure of their kicks has been great so far. It's been all the All Blacks, but the variation, Havili stepping up. Little dinks over the top there. I think Australia. he just thought he was going to be Australia, on him, did, did Caleb Clark offered that, that pass a bit earlier than he would probably have, would have wanted, KT. Yeah, I like the evolution of David Harvilli and his game in the midfield, Millsy. They're using him out the back door. We know twice already he's got that kicking game, but he had a back door as well. That's why the defence of Australia just had to hold just a little bit. And nearly, just nearly, they come off for New Zealand. But here, yeah, great attacking opportunity for the Wallabies. Tom Wright, the winger, was standing very deep, and there was a lot of space for him to land that ball in. So Fine. first scrum of the game. Oh. Jim Slipper on his 122nd test, coming under all sorts of heat on that side of the scrum. Lomax. One goal under pressure. And another penalty goes the way of the All Blacks, and that's a great first scrum of the match. Well, have a look at that. Three penalties for New Zealand so far. And they've put the skipper under massive pressure. So that's another way to get physical dominance is through your set piece. If you have a look at here, look at Lomax, he changed the air. He's got him, he's popped him up. Sam Kane in behind with the body height, two of his locks. Plenty of grunt through there. And this time they're going to have a shot at goal, the All Blacks, after that. So Jordy Barrett's going to step up, but Man, oh man, I'll tell you what, Tyrell Lomax has been playing outstanding this year. And that's just another example of it at scrum time, doing all his core responsibilities. Man, the number three on fire already in his first eight minutes. Interestingly enough, Carl, both All Black props born in Australia. Ethan group on the Gold Coast to New Zealand parents. Lomax, of course, well, he might have been born in Aussie, but he's it's all Wainui Amata DNA, isn't it? Jordy Barrett. Kick of about 45 on the angle, and he's not going to make it. Now swinging away to the left. That's some early danger signs here for the Wallabies. All Blacks really applying pressure at set piece. We play, please. Yeah, Foley just trying to slow things down and Come given on, a bit of a hurry up there from referee Reynal. He's trying to allow them to draw breath. Sends the kickoff down over halfway and Jordy Barrett is there. And heads off up over halfway there for Smith. Now it's a 2 2. Double tackle made on him. Maunga again. The tactic is the chip in behind Korumbeti. And this time they've cleaned up Andrew stop, Kellaway. Stop. Plays here for the Rebels in Melbourne. Barrett back in the action. Geordie setting off a crossfield. Brushes off the first tackle. And support is there in the form of Satuta. Basket falls away to Rico Ioani. Now Caleb Clark. Over halfway he goes. And it's David Harvili carrying on the pick and go. Whitelock, the winning quick phase ball. Dick Root now. Trying to hold him up, but it's there. Well, it came out the back awkwardly, and another penalty. That's four penalties already against the Wallabies. Oh, we're seeing some nice work here. The ball in hand, winning the contact, getting some quick ball, but the offload as well. It's dry, it's hard and fast down there, Carl. And some of these All Blacks here, they're loving these conditions. Yeah, they are, Millsy. Wouldn't mind them seeing... Tighten up just a little bit. A couple of 50-50 balls here, and that was one of them from the group. But already the frustration and the body language by the Australians after that penalty given away. Jed Holloway did the fantastic work to release that ball and make it uncomfortable. Put his hands on the hip straight away. Just a little, a little bit shaken and bemused at the moment, the Wallabies. Well, they've had 10 minutes play, and they haven't had the ball. It says 9%, but it's been very fleeting. But they can't get their game going. Straight from the kickoff, they've lost the ball. They've then had multiple penalties against them. 
and so and, and including the set piece so they're struggling to get a bit of rhythm but they're struggling to get their game going because it's all been defended equally though important for the all blacks that they turn it into points so they go back to Maunga, this one about 45, just to the left of the posts. And he struck it right down the middle, and over. 10-0 New Zealand. Laurie's there, Dave Rennie, and of course alongside him, Laurie Fisher. Veteran assistant. This is not the start the home fans would have wanted at all. Again, the restart is high, and it's Havili this time. Valentini gave chase. And it's inside the 22 for the All Blacks. Retallic, they came up on him quickly. Scott Barrett making his third start in the sixth jersey going in. Maunga floating the kick out about 35 metres from the corner flag. So it'll be a first throw for David Porecki. And one by Holloway. First touch here for Valentini. Chance for the Wallabies maybe to get something going. Oh, but Gordon, he was just, he was looking for someone to pass to. With no options there. And Lomax put him on the ground. Just a bit of concern about David Havili as play carries on. All black midfielder, you can see him down. And Len Ikitao, who's been one of Australia's best. Uh, Will Jordan just latched onto that like a barnacle, and he was not going to let it go. It's another penalty. Well, you can see what the Wallabies are trying to do. They use their big ball carriers Sorry. to try and really bust that middle. They just stayed up just a bit too long. Some great work over the ball there by Will Jordan. He stayed strong in that fight as well. Look at that. It looks like David Harville is going to come to the side for an HIA, so he's going to be replacing Juzi 23 by Quintu Piles. The hit up by Valentini. Mwonga goes low, and then Harville just takes a little oh. knock there against Sammy Kane. Friendly fire, yeah, so... He'll go off and get assist. Control the weight is first. Yeah, control the weight is first. The anguish on his face. That He's not up fit. brings a different kind of player. He's been kicking very effectively. Havili to play, of course. We know him. Just so good at taking the ball straight up. Another line out. Hoskins Satutu is the target this time. Kane. Away to Aaron Smith, and the referee, I think, might be playing advantage as well. There's, there's a problem here, maybe for Jed Holloway. Tackle, tackle, really, thank you. TMO having a look at something at the moment now. Jordan Satutu managing to get away from the tackle of Foley. Flying up out of defence, the Wallabies, but it leaves space for Moonga. Not able to take the pass though was Brody Retallick and they send it away downfield and they get a good bounce here too. Just got a little awkward on Jordy Barrett and the ball goes out over the touchline. Oh gee, that was some nice sense of play. Sam Kane, ball in behind, footwork here for Moonga, just that offload. Nice. Got ball and man the at the same time, time did Brody Retallick. Careful on the jumping across. You and you Sam, okay? Yeah, more clear, clear picture on the jumping across. You, you and you, no jumping across. Why is it that? No jumping across. Clear picture. Well, Sam Whitelock and Jed Holloway spoken to about jumping across the line out. Tolki Aho with the throw. Tap down by Retallick, little awkward, but oh, nicely picked up by Caleb Clark, and he bursts up over the halfway mark. Ball came out and been well snatched up. And maybe a chance here of a 50-22. Awkward at the back for Geordie Barrett. And a good chase from the Wallabies too. But you can see Sam Kane is back there. Scott Barrett is back there. And the All Blacks can bring it away from their own goal line. So that was an untidy line-out from the All Blacks. 
And Will Jordan, well, he's got all the time in the world. There was no Australian player within Kui of him. He's put it out beyond the 22. Excellent work over the ball by Liotta. You see here the bust initially by Caleb Clark. But he just sensed that the All Blacks seem nice and composed, even when they're under pressure. Even there when they're exiting out, they've lost the ball. It still seems to me, Carl, that they're composed and they've got time on their hands. Yeah, that's the thing, Mills. They do have a lot of time. And just looking at the Australian sideline, they are gone burgers. A lot of heavy breaths going amongst us. Hold four pack Liotta, who did the nice shot earlier on, and turning that ball over. Popped another one too, making the second tackle. But it's very evident the Aussies at the moment are really struggling with the pace that the All Blacks are showing. Well, Liotta goes back to join his teammates. Just a, a word, the All Blacks wearing black armbands tonight. You'll see them on the right arm there. Of course, in memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, but also Willie Lawsey, our, our brother, Grant Kelly, who was a long-time bus driver for the All Blacks. Dick Littlejohn, former New Zealand councillor and All Black manager, and one of the people really responsible for getting the Rugby World Cup up and running. And Ken Douglas, former New Zealand councillor, and of course a, a very influential figure in workplace relations in New Zealand over a long period of time. Stand back one, here we are. Go ahead, boys. Australia, here. Well, the Wallabies are going to get a chance here from a line-out. Just out from the 22. For Eki, to lob it down back over the back, and Samu is there, and cutting through is Tom Wright. Gets the pass away. No, he didn't. Taken just a few metres short. Now the referee's playing advantage for the first time in the game to Australia. Snapped up by Gordon. They look to get it out wide to Corey and Betty. He's lost it. Jordy Barrett's grabbed it, so they'll come back for the penalty. Right and a chance here for the Wallabies to get some points on the board. Oh, we talk about variation from the All Black line. How about this? From the Wallabies. Samu, he comes off the line. Yeah, they go backboard. Nice little hole. Just lost his supporter here. And then the infringement was made there by the All Blacks from the side. But there's some heat there, Carl, from the Wallabies, and they needed it too. Yeah, variation. An attack, wasn't it, Mills? You know how good Dave Rennie is. He's very inventive and in how he attacks and looks for weaknesses. That's an option right there off the boot of that scrum. Oh, Cotton Betty knows he had an opportunity there. We'll take the points, much needed to make it a one score game here, the Wallabies. Well, there's Pete Samu, Melbourne born, playing in the number seven jersey. Remember, they're still without Michael Hooper. And Fraser McWright had a pretty hard time of it and what was a, a rather insipid performance by the Wallabies against the Springboks and so they've gone with this trio of Valentini, Liotta and Samu because of their ball carrying they just haven't had a chance to carry so far but that seems to be the tactic Foley from in front Australia on the board it's 10-3 coming up 18 minutes gone in Melbourne we talk about that big second row for the Wallabies. We've already seen Rob Liotta with two nice turnovers. Tony, and then Pete Sabu with a nice ball in behind. Rob Bellatelli, Tini's had a nice hit up as well. So when they do get ball, they're very effective. So for the first time since the game started, New Zealand kickoff, Corin Bette. Bax will be well aware of the threat he poses. Liotta just losing his footing as he took it into contact. Coming back for Jake Gordon, the New South Welshman who belts it high. 50-50 and oh, getting after it. Valentini has got it. Puts the kick ahead and Kuro and Betty is flying. The ball beats him into touch though. Well, they almost made something out of that, the Wallabies. Just a sign there of how dangerous they can be. Well, certainly did, didn't they? For sure, this bounce. He wanted that to stay and almost kick back in. Well, that stayed in. New Zealand were toast. Compressed line out. Retallic quickly. And Moonga. He's put it out 
just beyond the 22, but Australia now just starting to come back into things. There's a couple things too, TJ. New Zealand are actually kicking the ball out. A lot of times they'll kick it and keep it in and kick long, but they're kicking it out, saying that they're not scared of the Australian line out for one. But on the flip side, Australia, they're kicking from line, which is a good option with Jake Gordon. Oh, yep. Yep. Well, he had warned them. Yep. The All Blacks yep. closed the gap. And they take it quickly. Gordon runs into a solid tackle by Lomax, but it's there for the Wallabies. And that is 15 metres from the line. Corin Bete. Valentini wants to go. Aaron Smith was there, but helped out by Big Brady Retallick. Parecki now trying to get hands on the ball, and there was Sam Whitelock. But the support play from the Wallaby forwards is good. Gordon doesn't really want to know about this one. He's saying to the forwards, you do something with it. Slip up. And the captain stopped just 10 out from the line. Now they look to spread it. Here's Lalakai Fouquetti taking in a double tackle. And they go back to fill it. Trying to spin away from the tackle of Satutu. There for Gordon. Now Holloway. Nice little ball out the back. Foley! And Andrew Callaway is in! Beautifully worked by the Wallabies. And they are right back in it. Oh, outstanding stuff from the Wallabies. Under all sorts of pressure in the early 10 minutes of the game. But they stay nice and patient. Have a look at this flick on ball here, right here. Foley. Barrett needs to come in to check that. Brilliantly executed try to the Wallabies. Once again, players in motion. It was a set piece play. Rico, you want to try to come back and save it, but you're right. Mills. Did they get it down? Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, Monsieur Reynald, you might just have to have another look at this. Rico Yawane, how good is that? How many times have we seen this? over the last couple of years. I don't think he's got this down. So can we check that? Can we check the grounding, please? Yeah, mate, uh, best angle coming up now. It looks like his hand under it, doesn't it? I don't think that's made contact with the ground. No, no way it hasn't. Rico, you won it. Look at that with the armband. That's up. Shows it on the other uh, angle just you, previous to this. Here we go. Angle, please. I think this one is the best. Here we've got the hands below the ball. Okay, <laughs> I never see a grounding. So, from, from my decision, it's cancel to try, no try. Yes, Matthew, I agree with you. We'll come back on the goal line drop out. I agree. Okay. Well, that is something quite yeah. sensational from Rico Ioannik. Crowd not happy as one of the local heroes from the Melbourne Rebels is denied. Well, it was, wasn't it? Because he was gone for all money. As you see there, but the ability of Ioane to get back in the hustle and the fight, outstanding. Well, it was such a glorious piece of play from Australia, but it's come up short. Valentini, well, I'll be angry about that. Whitelock trying to rip it away from them, but they come back again. A little double movement, a little loop movement, but Foley has lost it, and the pressure can be relieved now at scrum time. Yeah, and a great chance now for the All Blacks to try and get some field position. They've been parked in their own half now for a wee while. They won't like that. You can just sense the momentum of the Wallabies and their confidence as well starting to build. He just had a little look, didn't he, as he went pre-line. Foley, a lot of questions asked about this man. He hasn't played since 2019, his last test, but... Dave Rennie saying his experience, his voice during the week's been fantastic. Just a little mistake there, concentration lapse. He's played against the All Blacks from 20, since 2018, and he won't remember Watch. that too fondly. He got absolutely smoked the tackle by Ofa Tuunga Fasi. Five. Six. Oh, 
That's a tough ask for him. Hoskins yeah, Satutu of the All Blacks going to try and penalise or get a, a penalty out of this. Both from draw get up together. Scrum again. Okay. You just wonder whether they're going to use these early scrums just to try and put all sorts of pressure, put some doubt into the minds of the Australians at set piece. Yeah, and we probably that was already evident, wasn't it? I mean, that Jake Gordon took a quick tap off a free kick inside the 22. Have a look at this. Wow, Richie Moongo as well. I'm off. Seven block, Looks like Sam Kane's going to come off for an HIA now. The opportunity for Dalton Papali to come on and juicy 20. So the All Blacks lose their captain for the time being. And we'll await the outcome of the HIA. Meantime, Dalton Papali'i is on in Jersey 20. Presumably, Sam Whitelock takes over the captaincy. Adi Savia, of course, here in this game. He's back home, awaiting a big moment. Five! Six! Well, you heard Aaron Smith, go boys, go. But the penalty goes against the All Blacks, a knee on the ground. Knee on the ground. Well, they were trying to win a penalty, and in the end, they concede one. Who's that? Yeah. Yeah, nicely done too by Australia. It's at the back. And I think it was on the other side. Someone's knee went down. And the Wallabies, they feel a chance to the corner. And I think it was Ethan De Groot. And so that's a little victory there for Alan Ala Alatoa. Wallabies walk to a line out. Ten metres from the line. New Zealand made a great start, and oh, now they concede a penalty, penalty again for closing second the gap. Play. The first was a free kick, this time it's a penalty. We've got to admire the kickback from this Australian team. First that scrum time from this skipper James Slipper putting the pressure on. Now that line out time, but just to um, update. David Harvey has failed as HIA, so he has gone, and the captain now on field is Sam Whitelock. So two New Zealanders. Your having mark. to go off for head knocks, and one of them won't be back. We'll await news on Kane as they throw to the line out Australia and Holloway They're trying to break it up. But the Aussies have got it, and they're surging towards the line. And the referee playing advantage here. Valentini is over. Well, this is a great response from the Wallabies. Gee, is a what? They went to the corner. They backed themselves. Did the Wallabies, they split them apart. Here we go. It was a penalty advantage for bringing it down. Papali'i, I think it was. And how about the strength there? One on one, gets himself over. Great response to Wallabies. Yeah, and it's from their big boys, the three up loose. They were talking about, they've been fantastic in their carries. The way he's able to absorb the hit from Ethan the group and put their ball down. Valentini has been a monster so far. 20. Well, it's going to get worse for the All Blacks because Dalton Papali, he's only been out there for a couple of minutes. He brought the ruck down and now he's gone to the bin. So from a great start, this has been a real turnaround. Australia now with the chance to level and the All Blacks will play the next 10 minutes with 14. Foley to level it. It's 10 all at Marvel Stadium. Australia showing their fighting qualities. Oh, this was just a nicely executed drive, wasn't it? 
Some good fight there to split the All, all Blacks open. There it is, number 20. Bapali'i and great body height. Well, ball not taken cleanly. Great chase from Jordan. And Retalix grabbed it. How can New Zealand reassert themselves here? Moonga away to Geordie Barrett, lengthening stride as he goes into contact. They try to hold him up. And he's going to do well to get that out of there. He won't. Oh, no, the referee says there it is. But who's it there for? Yeah. Now, uh, will be Australia ball. Jordy Barrett just could not get a knee on the ground. Well, he tried, didn't he? He got very upright. I think he was looking for an offload or a pass on the inside channel. And they just got underneath him, Carl. Yeah, Valentini, again, showing his strength. They lose for a trio. Rob Liotta, Pete Sama and Rob Valentini at the moment. It really worked. This Australian Wallabies outfit back in there. You can see also the good work from Tom Wright in there. Well, Kete also getting involved, but look at him here, the number eight. That's good, Snapping right, up please. that ball and going forward. I suppose you could, one thing you could say about Geordie Barrett, I think he thought he had got a knee on the ground, but those knees, are a, they are a long way from the turf, aren't they? Oh, just an update, men. Looks like the All Black skipper Five. Sam Kane, he's failed as HIA, he is gone for the evening. Wow. Two fairly significant disruptions for the All Blacks now. Losing one of their midfield playmakers and their captain, Lalakai Poketi. Oh, he's done well, he's got it away to Samu, and he burst up the middle. Pete Samu, good tackle made by Barrett, but he's able to pop it up to Foley. Kick in for the corner, Clark is back. Hammered by Koro and Betek. And New Zealand need numbers back quickly. Oh, they've done it. Well, that was a great run off a really good pass by Pete Samu. Well, they were in choppy waters early on, the Wallabies, but they're riding a bit of a wave at the moment. Huge, huge clean out too from one of the Wallaby forwards. But New Zealand get it away. Well, here's the initial break from Samu. I would have liked Bernard Foley to keep this ball in hand. He had numbers on the outside. Good flick and awareness from the open side too. Caleb Carr coming back. And Colin Betty, we know he can chase and hit. So the line out, five metres inside the 22. Oh, Barrett does well, he gets up and challenges. That's a brave thing to do when you're inside your own 22. But the value of having a tight, loose man in the sixth jersey. And New Zealand can clear it away again, but they haven't found touch. Coin Betek. Tries to get away from Jordan, and he does so, and he gets away from Satutu and Tauki Aho. What a great run from the brilliant Fijian. Now Foley, he's got confidence coming back into his game too, after a rocky, rocky start. Oh, but a drop. Oh, Tom Wright. They had them under pressure. Well, you're just noticing now the confidence, and it's been built on the back of their loose trio. Cordy Fetti now starting to stand up in his 50th test match tonight. Gee, he put a hit on almost over the outline. And how about the strength? He got rid of a couple of men here. One, gets rid of another one. Strong display there from the winger. Well, the thing is, too, Mills, it was very evident they lifted the physicality stakes, the Australians. It's been led by their back row in particular. Like you said, now they're getting injections from this guy. Getting options out the back door. The midfielders also are starting to grab it and put shots on as well. And just a bit of treatment for Ethan de Groot. Gallagher, the back trainer, was out there and it took a while. So 
So Papali'i still with five minutes left in the bin. 30 minutes have come and gone. And it's all locked up. So the All Blacks will have a scrum. They had the early ascendancy. But Australia look like they've sorted out a couple of problems. Right. I'm not sure the All Blacks will go looking Bye. to milk a penalty here. Set. Scrum starts to go back, and it's a penalty. Right, Dad. Well, they have really turned things around, the Wallaby forwards. Oh, man, gee, have they won. Tight on the pressure. Really turned on the pressure. And the Wallabies, momentum, confidence, look at that. Yeah, James Slipper in particular, just talking to his troops, able to reset them, really has settled them down. They're going to go to the line out here once again, Milsey. Will they go to a trick player? Will they be conventional and try and go right, right through the middle? Remember, they had the one-man advantage of scrum time with Papali'i off the field. Well, the ball just didn't go beyond the All Blacks' second row. Now they have a line-out. Just over five from the line. New Zealand unlikely to contest this one. They go to Valentini and they do work a move around the front. It's Liotta cannoning into Caleb Clark. Stood his ground. But now the Wallabies will fire away. Valentini has stopped. Samu has got it. Brady Retallick making another tackle. No way through for Slipper Porecki. Just had a little glance away to the right. Not out. Not out. Oh. Samu says go left. Holloway's there. Gordon swings it away. Here's a chance now. Almost through with Zeki Tao. All Blacks short of numbers on the left. Samu driving for the line. Pete Samu's just short. They have another go. Desperate defence from the All Blacks on their goal line. Numbers to the right. Parecki, well, he throws it away to the left. Kuro and Betty's there. It wasn't the right option necessarily because they had numbers to burn on the right. Philip trying to drive his way through. All black defence holding. Slip up. They come at him. Gordon wants numbers. Wants some big men to come away to his right. Oh, ball squirts out. A little awkward. Parecki's there. Slips the first tackle and almost gets away from De Groot as well. The Wallabies are protecting the ball well when they're in possession. Now Fouquetti using his strength. Oh, good work from New Zealand at the breakdown. I think Quintu Pai is the man they're going to give the slaps on the back to. Oh, excellent work there by Tupai, but well, they dodged the bullet. The Wallabies going the wrong way. It's some nice contact here. They chose to go to that left-hand side. Everyone gravitated in. Samu, he was close as well. Look at the All Blacks going around there. And watch the work of Kutsupaya. He fights, releases it, gets back on it. Excellent penalty. Yeah, it looks like one of the big boys for Australia might be gone. Rob Liotta under that tackle and hit from that line-out. It's no good, looks like a leg complaint, so he's going to be replaced. Jersey 19, Derry Swain. That's a shame, he's been big. Well, I'd imagine now that Holloway will go to the flank. New Zealand win the line out. Satutu picks up a low ball, gets it away brilliantly to Caleb Clark. Tupaya tracking up on his inside. Oh, Caleb Clark just bumping them off one after the other. Eventually, he's taken. What a great run out of defence. The pass was sensational. The run even better. And now the penalty. And surely this is a yellow card as well. 
14. Oh, this is excellent. Number 14. Oh, Quintu Pyre. I think he's in trouble here, Carl. Yeah, it does not look good. Just in that clean. You come back awkward. There's a yellow card for the cynical play. Tom Wright, the right hand winger, but yeah. Doesn't look good at all, TJ. Well, New Zealand have already lost two players. How good was this? Oh, it was excellent work, too, by Hoskins to Tutu. Guys, he didn't get a very good pass, but popped it in on the inside. He had a bit of work to do, but he showed a little bit of composure here. Very right in, and he beat a few players that Caleb Clark. I'll tell you what, Millsy, he came up limping as well, just with that left ankle. This is where, fortunately, like Quintu Pai, is just going to come back a little bit awkward than this clean. Oh, there. Oh, he's cannoned right into him there. Oh, this is Dar this is Darcy Swain who's just come on the field. And I, I think he's in trouble here. He's gone straight into him. It's the player targeting the lower limb of the jackal. Oh, Tupai has gone. He's tried to get back to his feet and he Yes. Just can't walk. But this is foul play, I think they're looking at here by Darcy Swain. Yes, yeah, so a left knee, a think of Quintu Pyatt. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's nothing long term for him. 23's left, uh, left leg when he's jackaling. Just keep having a look. So show me again the number 19. Yeah, keep having a look from camera three. We'll come up now. Well, Swain. <laughs> He does have a reputation for doing reckless things from time to time. I'll have a look and see what happens here. Remember, Tom Wright's already gone. It's with the headgear coming in here, isn't it, TJ? Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, he's just gone straight in at the back of the head, hasn't he? It'll come, Matthew. The director will find it for you now. Show, show me what you want me to see here. Matthew, there is a targeting of the lower limbs by 19 Australia. Yes, Matthew, we're trying to find it for you. Keep playing that, please, director. Well, I, he said targeting at the lower yeah, limbs. There it is, there. Was it just that, Matthew? But I think he's already gone in around the head. Yeah, I, I don't think it's that initial clean. You watched Tupaya get up here, and number 19, so he gets back up, okay, and he good. actually targets his left knee. From the side. Here we it go. Is here. Now there. there it is there. I don't, I don't see a few oh, he's... This is your angle, Matthew. Oh, yeah, oh he's yeah, wrapped the arm yeah, around that's it. it yeah. That's not good. That's okay. grotesque. Yeah. And, and it's from the side as well. Number 19. Yes, correct. Captain, please. Number 19, please. Number 19. Yeah, but that, that's your responsibility to not put yourself in a reckless position, which can seriously injure the player. You cannot target the, 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 the legs straight on the knee. It's dangerous, so it's a yellow card. Oh, Darcy Swain joins Tom right on the sideline and suddenly Australia are down to 13 and I'm, you can see there the damage that he has done I think he's lucky to get off that with the yellow but I still think his initial charge into the ruck was iffy as well well the wash up is lads Dr. Papali is back onto the field and Bowden Barrett has also come on. So Jordy Barrett will go into second five, Bodie Barrett out to 15. Wow. Massive disruptions for the All Blacks. They not only lose their starting number 12, they lose their replacement number 12. 
Well, they keep have to re having to reorder their back line, but now they've got a chance to get back in front against an understrength Wallabies team. Tokyo Hall charges for the line. Has he got that down? I'm not sure he's got this down. He might have lost that. Well, they're going back to halfway. Yes, go on, Mathieu. On, on field decision is not on. So we just, have, we just want to have the confirmation, please. It's Jake Gordon underneath. He was pretty positive. He got it down. Oh, no. Well, that's a great piece of defending from Jake Gordon. Yeah. So, man. We got a player in position of the ball. Lost the control. I see a separation on the footage. Travel forward, so knock on, no try. And we, we go for a goal line drop out. Happy with that? Yes, correct. Well, no now try. it's Australia's turn goal to dodge one. Samasoni Taukiaho thought he was in for a second, but denied by Jake Gordon. Yeah, goal line drop. Now the inclusion of Gordon was a talking point, but Please. he's already shown his value. Yeah, we play. The other thing too, he's a great sniper around the fringe, but just such a we determined play. character, and you don't get any of the histrionics you get with the bloke he replaced. Foley. Restart floating down to halfway. Caleb Clark. Let's see how that ankle is. Well, off he goes. And Took a bit of stopping too, but they did. Tokyo Hawk out the back door. Moonga starting to run. And Doe, oh, brilliantly taken in by Rico Ioane. Almost got it away to Aaron Smith. John. Rico Ioane is looking lethal, but Australia survive again. Oh, just confidence in his form. His ability to get on that break. Uh, he's sighted it just a little bit low there for Aaron Smith, but they're certainly getting some in inroads a little bit wider as we see Quinta Paya. That looks serious. I'll tell you what, both teams have had really good opportunities to score. I just feel at the moment it's just a period of whoever takes that one or two and able to put back to back scores to take charge of this test match. That is a real shame for the young man. So, uh, yeah, it looks like it could be. Here is a long-term injury. Come on, guys. Darcy Swain gets to come back after 10 minutes. Here is a mark. Here. Here is there, scrum is deep powered now with Swain off. Then, so I'm sure the All Blacks will have a target here. Well, it's been a story of one team making a great start, the other one making a great response, and now. We've had a, a long period of Bind. neither team able to really take control. Oh. But here's a chance for the All Blacks. Oh, the Aussies are holding it initially, but now under all sorts of pressure at the back. New Zealand have walked over it. Maunga floats a long pass. Here's Ioane, but it's not a great pass. Bowden Barrett left it behind. And well, was picked up after the knock-on by a player in an offside position. Well, it was not, it was not he just needed to straighten up a little bit, didn't he? Rico Ioane. Here we go. They backpedal. It's a long ball here. He needed to straighten up just a little bit longer. Time off. Time off, Jan, please. Oh, yeah, I thought he was actually going to have a go on that outside break that we know so well, Mills. He just did give it a step. Too early, but that's great scramble from this Australian outfit. Huge let off for them. Well, the referee's giving them a bit of a talking to. He took time off. He took the or stopped the clock because obviously with two players in the bin and not exactly rushing to get play restarted. You, I guess you can't blame them for that. Foley sends it down to halfway. Line. 
So, Varecki. Didn't have that many options, Australia, but... Invention around the front. Pete Samu. It was rolling forward. Now, Bellatini. They have lost Liotta. He was already on the ground. Well, they couldn't free it. But it was trapped in there, so it'll be a scrum Australia. Well, that's exactly what they want at the moment. It's a key power. No, no, they are not latching. They have to be fully mined. They have to be fully here. It's not a latch. I think both teams are having a, just a, a little bit of not a difficulty wave, with... They are not fully mined. At the breakdown, and, and the referee... The complaint from James Slipper was that he's letting players put hands on the ground before they attack the ball. It's something that in New Zealand and Australia there's been a real move to cancel out of the game and I think there's been issues both ways with that. I think that's what's just causing some conversations. I think though TJ the Southern Hemisphere teams have to adjust to the Northern Hemisphere referee and it's just something that We've really struggled with down here, so I think that's something on the players. You have to adjust to what's being called, and if that's the call, then that's the call. Well, almost half time here in Melbourne. Dave Rennie got plenty of notes there. David Porecki still getting some attention. This is a man who made his debut at the age of 29 in a 30 to 28 win over England and Perth. Looks like he's okay to continue. Darcy Swain barely had a chance to raise a sweat. He was out there just minutes before getting carded. Likewise, Dalton Papali in New Zealand. Well, can Australia get this in and out? They've got Koroim Bete. Packing down on the side Five. of the scrum to give them eight. Six. Oh, oh, New Zealand went early, and they'll kick it into touch. And it has been a very tight first half here. New Zealand started so well, but Australia hit back with great courage. An eventful first half, but at half time, it's all locked up at 10 all in Bledisloe 1. Half time, we're all tied up in the Rugby Championship, the Bledisloe Cup. It is 10 points all between the Wallabies and the All Blacks. Let's go inside the All Black camp with assistant coach Scott McLeod, standing by with Carl Tanana. Scott McLeod, assistant coach for the All Blacks. A lot of disruption with players coming on and off the field. How have you felt they dealt with it? Yeah, really well. At half time there, we we're just going through the clarity of the guys that are filling in the new spots. Um, so we, we made sure we cover that really well. Two man advantage to start this half. There seems to be sometimes a tendency to chase the game. What's the message? Yeah, no, we're not going to chase it. We've got five minutes there with extra numbers, but we have to get our height sorted both with and without the ball, so we're concentrating on that. Go well, coach. Thanks, mate. And looking forward to what the All Blacks have got in store for the Wallabies in the second half. Let's go back to your team led by Tony Johnson. No, my hockey, my welcome back to Marvel Stadium. It has been a dramatic, prolonged first half. 58 minutes it took with all the disruptions. A rearranged all-black side now. Australia with 13 to start the second half with Wright and Swain in the bin. And it's 10 all. Bernard Foley with the restart. safe as is Sam Whitelock. Now can New Zealand cash in on this numerical advantage and make a start to the second half similar to what they did in the first. Bowden Barrett kicking out towards the wing. Jordan is there and he sends it downfield. It's going to roll and cuts back to field. Awkward for Callaway at the back. Oh, he did well to get away initially from Ioane. Grabbed though by Jordan. And uh, New Zealand a chance to walk over this. They have. Smith gets it away. De Groot quickly on. Good hands from Rotelic. Now Tolkien Ahol. 
goes on his own. Oh, they're not going to stop him this time, the big man. He's in for a second. Sensational start to the second half from the All Blacks. It all started from the kickoff. It was a brilliant kick, or cross kick, from Bowden Barrett as we see them walk over here. They counter-rucked the All Blacks right over the top. Excellent work here from the group because he gave that long pass, which needed to happen. They had numbers. Brody Retallick straightened up. This was a hard situation because they were drifting off, so it needed a bit of strength, and that's what he had to talk you out. He finishes the job. It was a good work by there. Just a little straighten by Brody to Retallick just to eat up a bit of space. They overchased on the outside. We know how lethal Samasoni Tokiaho is at finishing. He can take that all the way back to Will Jordan and Hoskins to Tutu counter Rucky and getting that turnover. Well done. 52 seconds it took to take advantage. Well, I thought for a moment I've been a bit premature by saying he's not going to be denied because Matthew Reynal, the referee, checked something at a previous ruck. But it appears there was no problem. And straight away, the All Blacks have taken the lead back. And Richie Moong, a, a chance to make it a seven-point advantage with just a couple of minutes gone in the second half. Nice strike from Moonga. And the All Blacks go ahead through a try by sensational Samasoni Taukiaho. Oh, gee, it was a good try. Nicely executed kicks from their own 22. But the ability to walk over and be on the same page and counteract as is the pass from the front rower to Groot. And an excellent finish. Well, they've made a change at half time. You can see the skipper there with the big ice bag on his calf. Yeah, he's been replaced in Jersey 17 by Scott Seal. So both teams suffering some injury disruptions. New Zealand now with Geordie Barrett playing in the midfield. They go wide again. Satutu Yuani puts the accelerator down. Satutu. He puts a kick ahead. Big Brody Retallick getting after it. Kellaway's back. Oh, no, it's going to be a high tackle. They'll score here. If they do, it'll be rubbed out. Oh. High tackle block. Okay. block, high tackle. Oh, I'm not sure about the kick, though, yeah. from Hoskins to 2 You had Brody Retallick on the outside. I think the hold here is better, Mills. Yeah, absolutely. He needed to keep that ball in hand. Have a go himself at least, or at least try and put Retallick in there. There's a high tackle from Ioane. But I think if he had it again, he would have had, held that ball. Hoskins to 2-2, two -two, but a great burst again from inside their 22. Well, taking advantage of a man short. Remember, Tom Wright, the winger, is not there. So just to clarify, the All Blacks have moved Jordy Barrett into the midfield. Bowden Barrett is at fullback. Parecki uh, looking to go down the back, and Holloway grabs it. Quick sack from the All Blacks. Oh, access to the ball carrier on one side. You can see Retallick trying to come through, and he has done pretty well, but Valentini comes away with it. He's put on the ground, Tokiaho and Scott Barrett, and they'll just try and use up some time here. Samu, such a devastating runner. Scott Barrett trying to get hands on it, but Australia have been pretty good at protecting their own ball in the breakdown. Gordon kicks, coming for Jordan. Coron Betty giving chase, but oh, Jordan takes it nicely. Not too many opportunities for Jordan so far in this game, and a penalty. 12 on feet. 12 on feet. And so Tom Wright 
comes back and Darcy Swain, the more you look at that incident, rather lucky just to have spent 10 minutes in the bin. Yeah, but pretty good game management, you have to say, from the Wallabies. Tony, Tony Leak, seven points, they'll take that all day long. They went into the half equals. So an opportunity here for them to back that up with some points. It was Lalakai Foketi who won the penalty. Man, he played a couple of seasons for Bay of Plenty. Hamilton born, but grew up in New South Wales. Played for the Steamers before heading back to Sydney and very solid midfield when you consider there's no Samu Karevi at the moment. Hunter Paisami is out. Fairly inexperienced in there too. You talk about inexperience, you get this experience, man. This is the exact reason Dave Rennie has given him a shot to nail moments like this for Bernard Foley. So we're back to 15 on 15. Can Australia reduce the margin to four? Foley, all concentration, and he swung that around beautifully, strokes it between the posts. There's the work of Fochetti. Jordan trying to claim he did release it, but I no, was having nothing of it. But nicely pulled down by Darcy Swain. Holloway, Papali'i coming forward. The backs have pushed them off the ball once. And a second half breakdown, not this time. Jordan. No, no, trying not to work the ball team, out. Stay Use it, please. And he bounces it high. Coming forward is, uh, well, Bodie Barrett. Didn't take it quite cleanly, oh, and now there's a knock on on the ground. Yeah, first one was backward, second one on it the ground. Came back off Bowden Barrett, but there's Will Jordan on the ground. Couldn't secure possession, and so it'll go to a scrum. Porter's getting plenty of height on his kicks. He just overran it, got un right underneath it as opposed to getting in the air there, off his head. And knocked on by the group. Yeah, degree it was, sorry. I think uh, Jordan went for it on the ground. Oh, it really is a good option though, Jake Gordon kicking from nine. Whereas the All Blacks tend to kick from ten and Richie Moonga in particular, Boat and Barrett out the back. So he is getting height and it's making it contestable. That's the thing, isn't it, Millsy? He's giving his chase his time, isn't it? I mean, they almost look too far but because of the height that's on it and i think that's where it's caught Bowden barrett off guard he's overrun it thinking it's a lot shorter than what it was and he's his time he's all out so great kicking option jake gordon the scrum battle resumes I tell you the penalty count that went heavily in new zealand's favor early is back to seven all and australia They've won a couple at scrum time. Scott Seal, the replacement in Jersey 17. Off the back, Valentini and bodies in motion. Claw and Bette taking it into contact. Good tackle made by Aaron Smith. As Phillips met by the two New Zealand locks. Back they go to Foley for the kick. That's deep, no real pressure on Bowden Barrett has a little look around. Now Jordan tries to send it deep and get it in behind. Corin Betty's always oh, lost that. Oh. Referee says it went back. And so off goes Corin Betty. Can't get away from Jordan. And Tokyo Hall right there to win the turnover. And oh, Corin Betty played that on the ground quite cynically. Oh, this is excellent work here. First, the tackle, and then Tokyo getting out of the top, but also the counter rucking to get past the ball and win that turnover. Yeah, but Will Jordan once again saw the space, hit the space, and then chased that kick and affected the tackle. Yeah, sure, he hasn't had many attacking opportunities, but the couple of touches he's had, such as that, it's been impactful. 
Yeah, on the back they go. And Scott Barrett. Tokioho. Takes up position at the back. And the All Blacks start to march it forward. Rolling it. Oh, that's been dragged down. Aaron Smith, they're under advantage here. Rico Ioane gets through the first tackle. Chopped down nicely by Ikital. Oh, there's another hand in the ruck. Well, goodness me, he's gone, surely. Number nine. Well, he's going back to the other one, the Number other nine. penalty, and Gordon's going to the bin. But, boy, Tom Wright is lucky he is not off with a red for a second yellow card infringement there. Yeah, number nine, yeah. please. Yeah. Ben, I just want to check the number, please. I see the number nine collapsing delivery. The... Yeah, number nine. Number nine, please. You're the number nine? You are the number nine. Collapsing more. Clear momentum, collapsing all the rivera. Well, the Australians have been just infringing at the breakdown and hoping to get away with it. Let's have a look here at Gordon. Well, what do you think, Mills? He's actually pulled out of there. Yeah, I don't think he's pulled that down, whatever. He's just fallen over. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit rough. He had a go, but realize what was happening there was a maybe just a little play at the legs but maybe gordon's lucky uh, sorry no gordon's luck. unlucky no tom right riding his luck all blacks made a change here too uh, george bowers on a jersey 17 replacing stop, stop, ethan stop, stop, de group well upshot of it all is that the all blacks have a line out five from the line and fraser mcwright is on Big chant going up for the All Blacks. Matt Phillip about to go. Yeah, that's who McRae has been called on for. He's been limping around for a while. The big second row had a good 50 minutes. They go to Satutu, and the referee has the arm out. Samasoni Taukiaho gets it away. Smith, now Moonga slices through, and he's in. He went straight through the tackle of Foley. And he's in, and the All Blacks extend their lead. Oh, this is just mounting pressure, penalty advantage. Nice little back ball in behind. Ioane, he just snipes out a beautiful hole. Shows his footwork and a bit of magic with his hands as well as we see the back end of it. And an excellent finish from Moonga. Well, we see it on this replay, Mills. He's actually hitting the angle, whereas the defense is set up straight. So when he hits that angle, he's able to get on the outside. And Richie Moonga is an elite type of player. Well, he still had a bit of work to do after he'd seen off Foley. Two defenders coming across, but great determination and... A bit of a swing since halftime has seen the All Blacks now extend their lead to 24 to 13. But geez, hasn't this kid settled into the 10 jersey? He looks very comfortable at international level now. Richie Moonga. Oh, they've had so many disruptions as well. Jordy Barrett there did a beautiful ball that just allowed him to get on that outside and plenty of momentum. Substitution 14 more. 14. Interesting sub this one, Carl. Yeah, Nick White, he's coming on. He's replacing the outside center, Len Ikitao. Well, they need a halfback, don't they? So I guess that means that Jake Gordon's gone for the game. His time's up in the bin, they'll bring Pattaya on. Deep kick and Richie Ball all the time in the world now to line up the touch line on the far side and put it out. That's a very good kickback from the try scorer, Richie Moonga.
few rugby matches in his time. Laurie Fisher, that he's, sees his team under a bit of pressure again now. Valentini, he's the sort of man who can get his team back into the game. And White sends a high one down to Caleb Clark's wing. Oh, he snatched that beautifully out of the air, Caleb Clark. Scott Barrett off the pass by Aaron Smith. And the All Blacks now have got some good momentum. Bowden Barrett. Away to Retallick. Smith. Barrett again going high. Not a lot of depth on this kick. Racing forward is Callaway. Oh, he's gone under him. But the referee says play on. Jordan, they took it well. Not, not at all bothered by the challenge. And so the referee... And quite rightly on that occasion, it's just said play on, and the All Blacks can do that now. Moonga swings it wide. Caleb Clark has been very menacing. Now Bauer. So George Bauer on the field in 17. Little kick into space. Jordan's after it. He's got it. Will Jordan. Oh, he is quite sensational. Gee, is he what? And the connection between him and Moonga, sensational, because he was one that caught it. It was a balanced display, because it needed to be patient. There was an advantage being played on the outside, but he sweeps back round. In fact, it's Barrett. Just a little wee dink over the top, nicely weighted. He had to collect a left foot step, and it's too much gas from Jordan, and another try to the sensational winger. The composure shown by him. He's the one that makes the call. He knows he's got a player coming. Has a little, little look at the defense, takes the pill and steps at the same time. Holds the ball in two hands if he needs to pass it, but he doesn't because he's an absolute sniper, Will Jordan. Well. There's another conversation going on with the referee. I thought for a moment he was checking something. Sam Whitelock is saying, what about what happened in the air? And Reynal is saying no. Pushed into the contest. No foul. But a quite brilliant try. Fins up for Will Jordan. Hadn't scored the last four tests, Jordan, but you're never going to stop him for too long, are you? I oh, know. He's just been hungry. Both wingers have been very active. For the All Blacks, and they just like that, don't they? You just feel that fast-flowing, free-flowing game. When it stops, starts, and that's when the All Blacks become frustrated. Well, they set the tone inside the first minute of the second half, didn't they, Mills? Jordan's 20th try in 20 tests. Smith scrambles it away. Ala Ala Tor. Look at the strength there, although McWright's done well. He's folded over the top so the ball can't come out. Okay. Well, I Start think off. Tyrell please, please, Lomax has been pulled out here. Okay, okay, okay. Guys, please. On your side, please. No, no. On your side. He's on your side, boys. Well, it's okay. the replay. It's Falau Fainga. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Benny, you have anything to add? We, we are penalty kick only for an illegal thing now. Did you see anything special here? Yeah. Okay. All Blacks have got themselves into such a good position at 31-13. They wouldn't Funny want enough. to throw that advantage away with another yellow card. Let's have a look at Tyrell Lomax. He's lifted him up, and oh, he's fallen on his back. I think this is more than a penalty. Oh, the rule book's actually yellow, TJ, for the fact he hasn't gone past the 90 board he has there, done a slammed him down. You have to... As a defender, ease him down. So I think just that force at the end is probably what's going to hurt Tyrell Lomax in this situation. Well, 
Well, he's saying penalty only because he didn't go beyond the the 90. But I think this is a pretty close thing, isn't it? Any time you're starting to lift players, you're getting yourself into Can danger. Well, Fang uh, looks okay. They'll go to the corner. They desperately need something to get themselves back into the game here, Australia. Yeah, well, looks like for them, Australia, you can tell, is going to come back on. Looks like All Blacks are making a change too. With Fletcher Newell coming on the tight end, replacing Lomax. Yeah. So that was Tyrell Lomax's last act of the game. Fletcher Newell in his rookie All Black year comes on. Oh, they overthrew it just slightly there. Fainga and charging away with it was Papali'i. Referee might be playing an advantage here. Bauer takes it beyond the 22. Oh, come back here. Stop, stop. Hey, guys. Oh, it's getting a little heated now. Thank you. We're back here. Stay, stay on. Black, black. Stay on, feet, guys. Back here, knock on. There was a knock on at the line out, he's called. So it will be New Zealand ball to the scrum. So what Australia have done, TJ, they've brought then Ikitao back on and taken them off for Tom Wright. So they want their midfield in defence. They're going to leave their right-hand wing free. Probably Andrew Callaway is going to cover that as fullback. So he has to cover two positions at the back. To see him just sneaking around behind the scrum now. So approaching the three-quarter mark test uh, of this test, letters low one. Six. Just two letters low cup tests this year. If New Zealand win this, they'll keep the trophy. Satutu off the back. Scott Barrett. Well, they've been quite happy right throughout this contest to move the ball from inside their own 20. Mong, a lovely sleight of hand. Eventually taken. Australia trying to counter up. A little bit untidy, but Papali is there. Okay, Cleans it up. No, no. Right was trying to disrupt. They'll go back to Geordie Barrett. He kicks out to the wing. He got the call from Caleb Clark. And he reels it in and off he goes. Caleb Clark. Kellaway just got enough of him. And it's been knocked forward. Well, that was a desperate tackle. They're now oh, a penalty. And you play New Zealand ground. had a hand in there, but what a and great heads-up play this was. Oh, this is excellent, wasn't it? Knock on first, and then play on the and He ground. just lost his way. Nuku Ioani was trying to find himself into space, but they both ran into the same hole because he cut back. Did Clark, but excellent work from Geordie Barrett in the execution of point. That equally good defence from Andrew Callaway just spoke about him having to cover. Two positions of fullback and the right wing, and he did brilliantly there with two attackers coming at him. Oh, one encouraging sight about this is the All Blacks have had to reshuffle their back line, but multiple playmakers able to pull off something like that. But now the attention goes back on the Australian line out. Last time down here, Falau Fangard just overthrew it a little. He needs to nail this. Swain coming forward. Well, eventually, he gets it too. McWright gets rid of it. White, Valentini, Geordie Barrett, though, solid on the tackle. Foley looking for a little gap. Oh, gets a brilliant ball away to Callaway, and the Australians are back. Gee, they're back, all right. There was absolutely nothing on from Foley. And he whipped out a nice left foot step, broke through a hole in the excellent. Well, look at that, all those defenders he had to beat right through the middle. Tackle and then an offload and Callaway, the benefactor. 
where he stopped the try just moments earlier, but that's just pure determination. Questions on the pass, can hear the crowd moan on yeah. that angle. Yeah, Sam Whitelock has just gone and had a real go at the referee. I think he will check the pass. They are right now. He's trying to convert a Foley, but the referee is saying... Oh, no. That is good. It's all confirmed. He slipped the ball away to Andrew Kellaway. The fullback scores, and we're back to an 11 point game with 19 to play in Bledisloe 1. And Dane Coles is going to come onto the field for the All Blacks in Jersey 16, replacing Tokyo, who has been outstanding. And coming back from the yellow card, number seven, Pete Sam. Tokyo just continues to rise and rise in Test Rugby. That kick has gone too far. Moonga puts the hand up in acknowledgement. This one is still up for decision. Yeah, midfield scrum. Some great attacking opportunities. You have to say, Valentini off the back, he's been pretty good. Nice and strong. They need a solid platform, the Wallabies. Just didn't quite execute it as what he wanted to. Well overcooked by Moonga. Yeah, we talk about attacking threats and opportunities. Jordan Pattaya, Jersey 23, has come on for the Wallabies, replacing Tom Wright on that right-hand wing. He is a danger man. Uh, Tom Wright, he hasn't had the happiest of games, but Jordan Pattaya... A player of rare brilliance. Foley parked up behind the scrum. And just while we have a reset, if I might, I'd just like to... send a big shout-out to two very important people in my life, my parents this weekend, or this week, I should say, celebrating their 65th wedding anniversary. Yeah. So scrum on halfway. Five. 17 to play. Set. New Zealand, four tries to two. And now a penalty. Second one. Penalty push. Second one. Yeah, they were free kick for it earlier in the game. So, as the TMO quite rightly pointed out, that one becomes a penalty. Yeah, this Thanks is big two. Chance to go right inside the 22. He needs to find plenty of territory on this. Uh, Pete Samu has done a good job. Not really a renowned number seven or a six or eight. Fanga. And they challenge, but it is Samu who goes up and again the All Blacks penalised for coming across the line out. Foley. Coroin Betet. He could still have a say in this game. Nice pass. Here's Jordan Pattaya. He's got a massive step on him. McWright getting out quickly to make the tackle on him is Dane Coles. They swing it back to the right. Valentini off the in pass. Snatched away by Nick White. Holloway driven back. Good defence from the All Blacks, so they'll come back for the penalty. Number four jumping across. Yeah, Brody Retallick it was. Well, it's eminently kickable for Foley, but I don't think they're interested in threes now. Five jumping across. So threatening That's too. The the wide pass got him Betty getting on that wide channel. The thing for me is Nick White because they're starting to get some quick Up ball down. around that ruck. He's taking a couple of steps in passing. The opportunity will open up for him. He'll take it. Yeah, the issue of the All Blacks just creeping across. There's a number of times I've come across the line out. That was a given penalty, so... Have to be on point here, can't give away anything in this area of the field. 
Well, he did warn them early in the game, and he has consistently penalised. And now, the Wallabies... An opportunity to close this one right up. Fainga, who is a try-scoring specialist off the back of a driving ball, but it's not going forward. Oh, I think he's got an advantage against Newell here, but they carry on. And now here's more trouble for the All Blacks. Callaway's in again! Andrew Callaway has a double. And now it's just six points with the kick to come. Oh, they really held that All Blacks defence back line in particular. And close, so they had to bite in. And they're on their heels. Look at that. All three of them. And it was a nice, beautiful, wide pass. They sent Callaway away, and he just finished the job off. Yeah, it was that second ball. There's the back ball right there. The option is actually to go to Kurobiti, but he saw it on the outside. The Callaway uses that dummy to go through. He turns his back to Bodie Barrett, and he takes the whole Callaway. What a score. The Wallabies right back in it. Well, every time the All Blacks take a lead, the Wallabies have responded. It looked like the game was getting away at 31-13, but two quick tries. And we're back into one of those could-go-either-way situations. Foley, four from four off the tee, has more than vindicated his shock recall to this team. Lands another one. And the margin is now four. And remember the restart from the All Blacks, Richard Wonga overcooked it, gave up position, and gave the Wallabies an opportunity to get back-to-back -back scores. Very important one right now. Kiri Ioane onto the field for the All Blacks, two in Jersey, 19, replacing Hoskins for 2-2-8. Well, Andrew Callaway from the Melbourne Rebels. Here's two tries in this game. How important are they going to be, not just for this match, but for the whole season for the Wallabies? Foley. Sends it out. And not a bad clearance either, beyond the 10-metre mark. Well beyond. Two former Chiefs coaches, of course. In the coaches' Go boxes. Good job. Jay Rennie, a two time winner. Coles. Uh, Kira Ioane straight to work. And now Geordie Barrett trying to thread his way through. Desperately held on to by Foley. Whitelock trying to get the steal there as McWright. But Aaron Smith has it. Dane Coles. Another carry. Coming for Smith. Newell, nice and ball to Bauer. The referee's playing advantage. Australia had crept up. They switch play. Maunga. Now Akira Iwani. Driving through the tackle. Stop. We come back here. 19. Well, what do they do here? Four-point lead. Oh, you've got to go for the shot, yeah. I reckon. Well, especially now the referee's just outside. moved a couple of metres down the field. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 19. Yeah, and I think that's a sensible decision. I know the Wallabies still have to come back and score. They try, but it just pushes them out to have them having to, if they do, having to make that conversion. Now oh, Foley, the fourth player to wear. The Australian number 10 jersey this year. James O'Connor just lost his form. Craig Cooper, a leg injury. Noah Lulosia, concussion. But it's Foley's opposite number now. Richie Maunga. Five out of six so far tonight. This perhaps the most important of the game.
This for a seven-point lead with nine minutes to play. Oh, he struck that. He's just drilled it straight down the middle. The All Blacks casualty ward applauding another fine kick by Richie Moonga. It's 34 to 27. And putting it far my silly is on for Australia from Jersey 80, replacing Ellen Alalator. So Foley. Can he land the restart in the right place? Caleb Clark has got it. And look at that leg strength driving through the tackle of Fouquetti. Again, the All Blacks, they haven't been kicking a lot from deep in their own territory. This time they go high, drifting out towards the touchline. Jordan, well, he tried to get after it. Some good play by Corin Betty, making sure he didn't. Well, he's a big man, is Pony Fa'amal Sili in Jersey 18. He's massive, 135 kgs. Kuroin Bete. Now Samu steps out of a tackle. Kuroin Bete gets the ball back to Samu. He's in. That's a great try again from Australia and a chance to level it up. Oh, Samu has had a sensational game. The effort to be able to break that tackle in the wide channel and the power that he was showing. Here we go, Cody Betty. Well, it was just between Cody Betty and Samu. He breaks one tackle on back on the inside and then back out to him again. Conversion to come, it's on. Oh, effort on effort play. Cody Betty. He's just a human hollow, really. He's a danger. You see him drawing two defenders. A lot of people question why Pete Samu was wearing the seven jersey and he's showing up tonight, that's for sure. The most important score this season for Pete Samu. Uh, Dave Rennie showing his excitement in the box, and why not? They just keep on coming back. It's now four tries apiece. And Foley from wide out, a chance to make it 34 all. This is turning into another extraordinary Bledisloe Cup test. Has yet to miss. Blacks charging, but he's not put off. It's over. It's 34 all. Brilliant kick. Sensational kick from the sideline by Bernard Foley. Wonga this time not taking any risks. Well, who wants it now? Kuroin Betty says. Will send it downfield. Chases after it, but Moonga is there. Caleb Clark, can he break through one more time? Looking to hold him up, but he's got a knee on the ground. Finley Christie is there. Well, discipline's going to be important now. Moonga trying to get the kick in behind Foley, but oh no. He's equal to the task. And he bangs it away to touch. Well, what a game he's had. Oh, lots of questions were asked. Look at him, he's pumped. He has not played Test match rugby for a long time. He's been inspirational. Are you right, TJ? Discipline key, as is territory. Well, what drama is left in this one? Sam Whitelock wins it. Moonga Papali'i charging into the tackle. Getting onto it. Oh, winning a penalty. This could be a game winner. Rob Valentini. Rob Valentini swooping on it. 
winning the penalty. And now Bernard Foley lines up the post from halfway for a kick that could win the game. I think they're still deciding. It was Fraser McWright is the one that got in, got underneath and lower Dalton Park believe, which allowed this guy, Rob Valentini, the try scorer, to have a go at the ball. Nick White is the one with ball in hand. Yeah, Foley, I think, just feeling this one a bit beyond his way. Well, Nick White gave away his starting position, but he could still be a, ma a potential match winner here. It doesn't often let you down, the Bledisloe Cup, does it? No. No way, does it? Nick White, very close to 50 metres. Twice in this game, the All Blacks have looked almost to be cruising. But this Australian team will not be denied. And now Nick White has a chance to put them in front. Oh, he's hit it beautifully. What a kick. Still time to play. There's still three minutes to go. But Australia are in front. After everything that's happened in this game, the Wallabies have taken the lead. They've stormed back from 31-13 down to lead it by three with two and a half. Oh, penalty! Penalty! Can you believe it? Oh, it's called the for sealing off. I think it's Punir Fowl, Marcillian Jersey 18 that's been hammered and identified. And they're going to go to the corner of the All Blacks for the win. They're going for gold. The All Blacks will have a line out five metres from the line. Sam Whitelock has backed his team, backed his forward pack to come up with a winner. Down the back they go, taken down by Barrett. Ruck going across the field. Ball on the ground. And a penalty, Australia! It's Fochetti, I think, who's got in there and come up with an heroic play. Oh, they wanted to get that drive going. It was at the back of the line out. It was nicely defended because they were going sideways. Here we go here. They had it at the back. Bowers have got his hands on it. And it just went down there. And there was a split there where Fouquetti got in there. And we play now. Well, the Australians giving a bit of a hurry up here. But this will go out. And all they'll have to do is win the line out and hang on to it for a minute, even less. Oh, he's taken too long. He's taken too long. That is massive. Coles wants the ball. It's not a penalty, it's a scrum. Oh, they were trying to run the clock down. This is a sensation. Oh, he's caught it, hasn't he? He said it's a scrum. Well, he told them two or three times to hurry up, and they didn't. You play, we play, okay? Then I time off, the, I time off, I switch, switch off the time. I say to, to your player, I switch on the time and you play immediately. Okay. And you wait, you wait, you wait. So that's a scrum for the All Blacks. Oh boy. You know it. If the All Blacks get out of this, gee, can you imagine what the papers and the websites in Australia are going to be saying tomorrow? It was Foley. So now the All Blacks have the chance. The scrum hasn't been a given either, TJ, so I'm sure they won't take this for granted. Well, the last thing they want now is to give away a free kick or a penalty. 
at scrum time to the Australians because that will be game over. Akira Ioane picks it up off the back, charges towards the line. The referee, I think, has been told that a man is offside. The TMO is saying a man offside, so the All Blacks are playing under advantage, but they want the win. Scott Barrett taken just a metre short. Under penalty advantage. Dane Coles has a go! He's short. Oh, he's just short. Bodies all over the place. Brody Retallick can see the line. Left hand side's on. Akira Ioane. Jordan goes on his own, gets oh. the ball away, and oh. Brody Barrett wins it for New Zealand! Oh my goodness! Has there ever been a finish to a test match quite like this? There has been no way, Tony. How did this happen? The All Blacks have stolen this one away in dramatic form. And what is it about French referees and last-minute drama? Jordy Barrett all smiles. This is a remarkable win. The game is over. The Australians are absolutely blowing up over that call to a water scrum for time-wasting. And Nick White's just yelling at the referee, you've just cost us the rugby championship. Oh boy, delight, relief, every possible emotion, and for Australia, just sheer fury. Oh, gee, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this before. Yeah, we we're not going to hear the end of it either. Well, a controversial finish, absolutely. And the referee is going to cop it as he leaves the field. Oh boy, take a breath everyone, we'll be back in a moment. Final score, the All Blacks have taken it. 39 to 37. Good evening, everyone, and what a fantastic test match we've all just witnessed. With the Bledisloe Cup back here in Melbourne for the first time in 12 years. With the All Blacks winning tonight, they have retained the Bledisloe Cup, which is very exciting for them. Now, before we get to the lifting of the cup, I'd like to invite and welcome our official party here this evening. A big welcome to Mark Robinson, CEO of New Zealand Rugby to Stuart Mitchell, the chairman of New Zealand Rugby, to David Cody, the president of Rugby Australia, and to Hamish McLennan, the chairman of Rugby Australia. Thank you all for joining us. Now we'd like to welcome both captains to the stage to say a few words, and we'll start with the captain of the Wallabies, James Slipper. Hey, uh, firstly, I just want to thank the crowd of Melbourne. Um, absolute scenes out here tonight. The atmosphere was uh, was electric and it, it really carried us home and um, that was a really classic Bledisloe game and uh, yeah, we're on the on the wrong side of the, the result, but you know, I'm super proud of how we play tonight and um, once again, you know, I've got to give credit to the ABs. Took it all the way and um, managed to get the win. So congrats, Sam and the boys. Um, for our boys, this one's going to hurt, but we go again next week in, in Auckland. So thank you. And the captain of the winning team, please welcome to say a few words, Sam Kane from the New Zealand All Blacks. Yeah, kia ora everyone. Uh, 
first of all, I'd like to thank all the awesome Kiwi supporters who came out here tonight. I think uh, there was a heck of a lot. A heck of a lot of black in the crowd tonight, and the boys could certainly feel it. Um, obviously, there was a, bit, a, lot, a lot of carnage out there with um, a fair few, few injuries, um, both skippers included. So, But what a classic uh, Bledisloe test match. Um, gun, ding dong, both ways. Um, and yeah, to win on the buzzer, we're obviously um, hugely delighted. To the, to the Aussie boys, what a test match. Um, it always is. It's always extremely tough playing over here. Um, but we'll see each other again next week back in Auckland. So thanks again, and thanks so much. I'd now like to invite David Cody to present the cup to Sam Kane and the winning New Zealand All Blacks.